Hi, my name is Shelly Steinwatten. I'm a humor writer and I'm a 2022 BC Culture Days ambassador. Karaoke ecosystems exist on the west coast of um, the North American continent. Um, and in BC, they are only found on the southeast strip, uh, coastal strip of Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. So um, living in this beautiful place, uh, you know, I felt like it was a wonderful opportunity for us to explore um, this homeland for um, ourselves, but also um, the home of you know, hundreds of insects and mites, uh, 14 amphibians and reptiles, uh, 33 mammals, over 100 birds, and just countless numbers of plants, um, and including 100 species at risk, uh, including Nanaimo's floral emblem, which is the, the bog uh, bird's foot trefoil. Um, it's only known at five sites at this point in BC. Um, so, you know, this is a, a place um, to situate um, an opportunity to tell a story about this place, um, given the breadth of what we have here. Words of an Ecosystem is um, a collaborative story that um, came together through contributions from myself and from community members uh, through an online gathering uh, on August 23rd. And it explores the Gary Oak Ecosystem, which is BC's most ecologically diverse uh, ecosystem. It also happens to be the most endangered ecosystem uh, on the coast of BC. Yeah, so the way it worked was um, I um, wrote five original narratives um, that represented five chapters um, of our um, current and potential connections to Gary Oak ecosystems. Um, the first chapter was isolation. The second chapter was imbalance. The third chapter, repair. Uh, the fourth chapter, was connection, and the fifth chapter, reciprocity. So I wrote these narratives, uh, and then the community members who attended the event added to those chapters uh, in a collaborative way on a Zoom whiteboard, and all their pieces uh, came together um, in this sort of spontaneous way, um, and in real time, uh, with no one knowing exactly what anyone was going to offer, um, but, you know, that was kind of the point of it, is we didn't know where this was going to go. Well, look at that hummingbird feeder. Isn't it fabulous? Just remember, the sugar liquid freezes in the winter and you have to thaw it. Otherwise, the birds die. Something about their natural habitat disappearing. So never forget, they become completely dependent on this feeder. They're like your bird children. Oh, bird children would be fabulous for you. Shall we take a look at the front yard? Seeing the final story compiled, you can see how playful the experience was. People were responding to each chapter's theme and building off what others were laying down on the whiteboards. Since the whiteboard contributions were all happening simultaneously, you'll notice that some contributions overlapped one another, creating layers. I think that invites new meanings and interpretations to everyone's writing and drawing. Looking at the evolution of the contributions from chapters one through five, there's a sense the excitement and enthusiasm of the participants is growing. I like to think there was also a knitting together of the participants, that the bonds between them even though most of us didn't know each other, 
grew stronger as a result of being part of this experience. So what I liked about this project was that, you know, it could combine what I was writing in a solitude on my own uh, and then have uh, people then build off of that and um, see where it would go from there so that, you know, I am inspired and, and appreciate the world of improv and you know, sketch comedy is often has this uh, component where people are working together and building off of each other and, and punching up um, what what each other is doing. So this gave that opportunity to do this in more of a narrative way um, rather than more of a performance way. Um, and uh, there, I really did want to encourage people to um, to respond to what one another was saying in the moment and, and not have any sort of predetermined, uh, preconceived idea about what the story could be. It was merely what came out um, in this very moment together. The online portion of the event was uh, in partnership with WordStorm, a literary organization here in Nanaimo. Um, and they are a wonderful choice to partner with to, to do the online part. Um, it felt like a very natural choice to come to the library in this, this public place, you know, a, a shrine for words, <laughs> if you will, uh, to, um, to then present our, our final story there. What was produced in the online activity was transcribed on display boards for the public to view at Vancouver Island Regional Library's Nanaimo North Branch. And it doesn't stop there. With the story on display, now everyone coming through the library has a turn to be a part of it. What will come out of the story? Will we choose to reharmonize and stand as partners with the land of the Gary Oak ecosystem? I hope that by participating in Words of an Ecosystem, it has inspired people to work in partnership with our non-human family and to make a small act of restoration, stewardship, repair, whatever you want to call it, for themselves and for the life around us. This is, this is deer fern, um, and it's evergreen, which is really nice. And it looks like kind of moister conditions, uh, but it's really pretty the way it has like a, the central rib is, is this chocolatey color and this nice deep green. And down here, these lovely tufties is um, sea thrift and it grows in coastal conditions. A bleeding heart because they look like little upside down hearts. Oh, this is, this is also flowering current, red flowering current. And there's little berries. How old do you figure this one is? Um, I honestly have no idea. Cause the thing with, with these trees is they grow in such variable conditions that some living right next to the ocean are really small and battered by the, s the wind and sea salt um, but they might be really really old but they're quite small in comparison to this guy who maybe has deeper soil conditions um, so I mean without a core sample you wouldn't know um, but I think you can you know it's safe to say that it's probably experienced a lot you know, what I hope comes out of this this project and this experience that people have had is that there's um, 
you know, just like how this story came together with small contributions from everybody, um, restoration or amelioration, whatever you want to call it, of these um, of this ecosystem requires that same um, effort. That it doesn't have to be this monumental uh, effort on one or two people's parts. It's about every small thing that each of us can do. So it was a line in the story that you contributed. Maybe it's a, you know, a pot with a few seeds uh, on your balcony that uh, restore a bit of Gary Oak ecosystem and support native pollinators. It doesn't have to be a lot. It's one small act that each of us can do uh, to bring us uh, closer to uh, repairing what is fragmented and disconnected. Yeah, because, I mean, none of us live in isolation. I think there's a tendency through a lot of conditioning over many years for in certain cultures that we are separate from a lot of things, that there's us and then there's nature. But that's simply not the case. We can't live without anything else. And we have a vital contribution to um, other species as well to help um, each other thrive. Um, so this, um, this project, this story, I think demonstrates that um, we are equal partners in, in how all of this um, ultimately goes and what our future might look like. Thank you.